Hey what's up YouTubers, it's Dansky and in this tutorial we're going to be taking a look at guides and margins in Adobe InDesign. So I've got my new document here. I'm going to start by creating some guides. If you can't see your rulers along the top and the left hand side, just go up to view down to about here and it should say show rulers. And there's the shortcut key. So select that and then simply left click anywhere within the ruler and you can drag a guide out. Now you'll see here that the actual uh, document itself has changed slightly. As you create guides, these are only visible in what's called normal mode. So this is normal mode. If I switch back over here to preview mode, it shows my document in its final size. So anything outside in the gray will not appear in the final document if I export a PDF or if I send it to print. So if I go back into normal mode here, and I draw a quick circle just to, oh, that's a hexagon. Let's try that again. We'll draw a circle. I'll fill this with a color. You'll see here that it only shows what is going to be printed or exported in the final document. And then the shortcut key for this is W. And then I can see everything outside. So there we go, that's how you quickly create guides. You just drag out from the ruler and then you can select them and you can move them around. And you can select them again. You see there when they're selected, they go from a cyan color to a darker blue. And you can go up to object and select lock and that will lock your guides. So now they're selectable, but I cannot, I cannot get rid of them. And I just need to simply go back up to object unlock all on spread and then those guides are selectable and I can delete them once again. Now whether you apply guides or margins on a page it depends whether you want to apply it, apply it to one page so here you can see I've got one page this is selected so any guides I put on this page are only applied to this page. If I double click on a master here so you'll see here that page number one has got the master template of a if I double click within this master, you'll see that the guide disappears. But if I create three more guides, and I've created those within the master template, and then go back, just by double clicking back to page number one, you'll see here that if I try and select all of the guides, it only selects the top one that I originally created on page one. The other three have all been created on the master page and they cannot be edited. So if I were to create a circle on the master page, so I've just gone into the master page by double clicking up here. I'm going to create a circle and then I'll double click on page one. I can't select this because it is on the master. So it's a really good way if you want to create a template of adding, I mean, what I do when I'm working on a really large document is I will add all my guides that apply to the whole document to the master page and then I haven't got to add them across all of the other pages. And if I do need to modify them, I only have to edit them on the master and that master will update across all other pages. So if we go up to layout and go down to create guides, we can create them here. So if we just tick preview, we can specify a number of rows so if you wanted to create a cross right in the middle of the document, so it's quite helpful to do that because then you can very quickly and easily center items vertically and horizontally. What you simply type is one row with no gutter. The gutter is the space in between the rows or the space in between the columns. So if we just type one and zero, that will create absolutely nothing because I've done that wrong. Let's try that again, create guides. So we'll type two rows with zero gutter, two columns with zero gutter. There we go, that's better. And it's created our crosshairs effectively in the middle. So if I create a shape, I can then very quickly and easily just snap that shape to the middle. And you can see here it's got uh, smart guides similar to Illustrator. There you go, you've done to grids and guides, you've got smart guides and a few other settings here. But it makes it very easy to just snap items to the center of the page. 
Now we could draw our margins manually by looking at the rulers and dragging out like so. But that's, that's uh, the more difficult way of doing it. The easier way to do it is to go up to layout, down to margins and columns. And here we can specify a few settings. So the margin is the space, it is the distance between the edge of the page and a guide that is going to appear inside the edge of the page. So for example, when you're designing a document, you wouldn't have your text touching the edge of the page, typically. You'd have it set in possibly 10 millimeters, 20 millimeters from the edge of the page. So there's a bit of space between the edge of the page and your content. This is also a good idea uh, if you're sending something to print as well, because if your text or imagery is too close to the edge, there is the chance that it may get trimmed off um, so it's always good to have a margin, but if I just set the margin of 10, 10 millimeters, and I've got this little link icon here, so it will keep the margin consistent around all edges. You can unlink that, and I could change the left and the right margins to 30. So you'll see here, it's previewing how my margins are going to look. So that looks fine to me. And then columns, I could specify three columns, so if I was doing uh, an article for example and I wanted to split my text into three columns I can select three columns and the gutter as I said before is the space in between each of those columns so I could increase that to 10 millimeters just so it's nice and consistent with the margin on the top and bottom of the page and select OK and same again if you create this on your layer one on your uh, page one sorry it will only affect this page. So if I create a new page, they will disappear. However, if I were to create all of these guides and these margins on the master page, they will then appear on every single page. So if you were doing a magazine, for example, and a lot of content would be using this same three column layout, it's a good idea to set a master uh, page because then you can just reuse that. And if you make any changes, then it will apply to all of your pages. And then if you press W, it hides all of your guides. This mode here is just previewing your final document that you will be exporting or sending to print. And then going back to normal mode, just shows you all of your guides, everything that's outside of the document area itself as well. So that's a quick introduction to guides and margins in Adobe InDesign. Uh, I hope it was helpful. Leave any questions or comments below. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care and I'll see you next time. Music